Hello everyone, this lecture presents an example of applying the modified denovit hartenberg method to solve the kinematics problem of a 5 degree of freedom scara serial robot. The process includes steps for attaching coordinate frames and formulating the forward kinematics equations. Following that, we derive the equations to solve the inverse kinematics problem to find the joint variables of the robot. The equations are structured in a general form, making them easily applicable in programming. Verification calculations carried out on a MATLAB M file demonstrate the correctness of the method. The results of this example are valuable in helping students better understand kinematic calculations and can also be used in applications for developing robot calibration algorithms or trajectory control for a 5 degree of freedom robotic arm. The structure diagram of a 5 degrees of freedom scara robot manipulator is shown in figure 1. We can see that the robot has four revolut joints and one translation joint. Including, joint 1 is a revolut joint, joint 2 is a revolut joint, joint 3 is a translation joint, joint 4 is a revolut joint and joint 5 is a revolut joint. For the convenience of analysis and calculation, the model of the robotic arm in figure 1 is redrawn into a schematic diagram as shown in figure 2 on this slide. The dimensions and joint variables of the robot are specifically represented in the diagram. The next step is to attach coordinate systems to the links of the robot using the modified denovit hartenberg method. The result is shown in figure 3 on this slide. This method was presented in the previous lecture, and you can review it according to the information provided below in the notes of this video. From the result of attaching coordinate systems to the links of the robot, we obtain the denovit hartenberg parameter table as shown in Table 1 on this slide. The joint variables will change during the robot's movement. The dimensions L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5 are specific parameters and constants. From the rows of this parameter table, we are going to describe the orientation and position between the successive links of the robot. Based on the results of the coordinate systems assigned to the robotic arm and the denovit hartenberg parameter table, we can write the matrix equations that describe the orientation and position between the successive links of the robot, as shown on the slide. Specifically, we use the general formula, 1, of the homogeneous transformation matrix from the modified denovit hartenberg method. This matrix describes the orientation and position of the ith link relative to the i1 th link of the robot. Then, by substituting the parameters and variables from each row of the denovit hartenberg parameter table into the general formula, 1, we obtain the homogeneous transformation matrices that describe the orientation and position between the successive links of the robot. Similarly, by continuing to substitute the parameters and variables from rows 3, 4, and 5 of the denovit hartenberg parameter table into the general formula, 1, we obtain the homogeneous transformation matrices as shown on the slide. By multiplying the matrices together, we can calculate the homogeneous matrix equation that describes the orientation and position of the final link, which is link 5 of the robot, relative to the base coordinate system 0. To perform forward kinematics calculations of the robot, we can write a program using an M file in MATLAB software to compute the matrices we have just constructed. In the program, we assign specific values to the link lengths of the robot, and we assign specific values to the robot's joint variables. The detailed program is shown on this slide, and you can pause to review it in detail and easily carry it out yourself. Next, we will solve the inverse kinematics problem for the robot. Given the position and orientation of the robot's end effector, we develop formulas to calculate all sets of joint variable values that can be used to produce the given position and orientation of the robot's end effector. For a serial robotic arm, the forward kinematics problem is typically easier to solve, whereas the inverse kinematics problem is more challenging and often has multiple solutions. We assume that matrix T, which describes the orientation and position of the robot's link 5 relative to the base coordinate system 0, is already determined and represented by equation 3, as shown on this slide. In this case, all the components R and P inside the matrix are already known and specified. By comparing with the matrix equation, 2, 
from the forward kinematics to the equation, 3, we derive the following system of equations to solve the inverse kinematics problem. From the equations of R31 and R32 we obtain the equation, 4, of 5. In which, the function at n2, y, x, is a variant of the arctan function that returns the angle measured from the x-axis of the vector, x, y, in the range, pi, pi. We cannot use the regular arctan function because it will return the same angle value for, x, y, and, x, y. Next, from the equation of pz we could compute d3 as the following. The equation, 5. Similarly, we can determine the formula for calculating the joint variable theta2 as shown in equation 6 on this slide. You can pause to read the detailed transformations presented on the slide. It is important to note that equation 6 has two solutions depending on the choice of sign. We continue to transform to obtain the formula for calculating joint variable 1 as shown in equation 7 on this slide. You can read the detailed transformations presented on this slide. We also note that equation, 7, for joint variable 1 also has two solutions. Continuing with the calculations presented in detail here, we will derive the formula for calculating joint variable 4 as shown in equation, 8, on the slide. Thus, we have completed the construction of the equations for solving the inverse kinematics of the robot. In analyzing the equations, we find that there will be a total of four different solutions to the robot's inverse kinematics problem. In practice, after solving the robot's inverse kinematics problem, we will compare the solutions with the measured values from the encoder or position sensors to select the closest solution. To verify the correctness of the forward kinematics and inverse kinematics equations we have developed, we write M-file programs in MATLAB and use specific data for calculations. Initially, we assign a specific set of values to the robot's joint variables as shown on the slide. With these specific joint variable values, the forward kinematics program will calculate the homogeneous matrix that describes the orientation and position of the end effector, link 5, of the robot relative to the base frame 0, yielding specific results as in equation, 9, on the slide. Next, we substitute the values of the components in the matrix from equation 9 on slide 16 into the inverse kinematics equations for the MATLAB program to calculate the joint variables. The program produces four sets of solutions, as shown in table 2 on this slide. Among the four sets of solutions, we observe that solution 1 matches the initially assigned values. This demonstrates that the inverse kinematics problem has been correctly solved, indicating that the kinematics equations were accurately formulated. The MATLAB program for calculating the inverse kinematics is detailed on this slide. You can review it and try to implement it yourself to gain a better understanding. Thank you for your attention. You can try doing it yourself to better understand the process in detail.